Hey y'all, this is Stacy with Miss Witchcraft. And today I'm gonna to walk you through the steps of creating a simple background layer from adding a title or pretty much anything else using Cricut Design Space and Photoshop. Before we start, I am using, I am working on a Mac, though I'm sure these same functions can be done on a PC. I'm also using just the basic Photoshop subscription. So as you can see, I've already got my title designed and ready to go on the mat. Um, you can use any pre-designed image from Cricut, or I actually just took a few different pre-designed images and modified them um, so that I could fit what I was looking for. So the first step in getting started with this is we are going to choose shapes. And I'm just gonna grab a basic square. And I am going to make that square quite a bit bigger than the image. Notice it's in front, it doesn't, that's how it's gonna show up at first. But I'm gonna make it quite a bit bigger than the image. I am then going to convert this to white so that it has nice contrast. Of course, if you're using white, a basically white title, you wanna use a different contrast color, but I'm gonna use white. And I am then going to choose a range and I am gonna send that to the back. So as you can see, we've got this nice white box directly behind our image. Um, one thing that is important here is that we want to make sure, as you can see, there's a little plus, a little T right in the middle. It's the centering um, device in the middle of that box. And we want to get rid of that so that it doesn't show up with our image. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the Cricut mat, the canvas, to get rid of that. So now we have our image with just a nice white background behind it. The next step is that we are going to take a, a, a screenshot of just this image. Now, in, in on a Mac, it's just a simple command function. You may need to, if you don't know how to do it on a PC, you may need to look up how to take just a, a picture of a portion of your screen. But for this sake, we're gonna use Command Shift 4. My cursor appears and I can just drag out a box to take a screenshot of that image. Okay, as you can see, it appears over here in the right-hand corner. It is saved to my desktop, which to me is the easiest place to work with it at. If you're saved somewhere else, you may need to find where it's saved to. Um, but so now that we've got that screenshot taken, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop. Again, it's just a basic Photoshop subscription. Now that I've gotten Photoshop open, I'm going to choose Open. and go to my desktop because it converted. So as you can see on my desktop, the last thing, the first thing on the list is the last thing that I did. So it's screenshot, I'm gonna choose that screenshot and I'm going to open it in Photoshop. And as you can see, so we have our title with the white background behind it all as one image, okay? So the next step, now that we have it here in Photoshop is we are going to select color range. From up here on the menu bar, you see select we're gonna press select, and then we're gonna choose color range. Okay, and I wanna pause here for just a second so you can take a look at how these settings are done. I have adjusted this a little bit. Um, the fuzziness, I've got it set around 115. If it's if, it, if the fuzziness, if that number's a little too low, it's not gonna give you a good solid outline around it. I also have checked off here selection. It doesn't seem to work if you have image. If you do image, it's gonna outline the whole the whole thing. So we just wanted to use selection. And I do have one little eyedropper here. I do not know what that means, but there it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna choose okay. And as you can see, you put a nice little dash. It has selected just the title here in this image. Okay, so now I'm gonna choose command C or copy. Okay, so if you're using commands, it would be command C to copy, or you can go to, in the menu here, you can go to edit and choose copy. So now we've copied that image. The next step that we want to do is we want to create a new layer. So again, there's two different ways that you can do that. Right here in the bottom right hand corner, there's a box with a T in the middle or a plus sign in the middle. You can choose that and it will open up a new layer. Or you can go to layer in the menu bar, choose new, and then choose layer. And as you can see, my layer has appeared and it is currently selected. Okay, so now we're working in this layer. 
The next step is we're gonna paste what we copy into that layer, okay? So again, there's two ways to do it. You can use Command V if you're using commands on a Mac, or you can go back up here to the menu bar, choose Edit, and choose Paste. As you can see, the, um, the squiggly lines around it have disappeared. The selection of it has disappeared. So now we've got it pasted onto our new layer. The next step is going to be to double click on this layer icon on the little fuzzy part of it. Open that up. Okay, and now, you, now you've got your layer style box open. I'm going to choose from styles here, I'm gonna choose stroke. And I'm actually gonna click on stroke again. And it's gonna change my, it gives me the option to change the structure of the stroke, okay? So right now, as you can see, when I did this, it made a nice outline around it. It kind of expanded the image. I have this currently, and this will be a relatively um, narrow mat. It won't be that much bigger than the current title, okay? I have it set at 16 points, okay? You can move this, and you can go as big or as small, as thin of a mat as you want it. So what I'm going to do with this first mat is I'm going to leave it at 16 because I think that's a good size for the base mat. And I'm going to choose OK. All right. So now I'm going to save what I've just done. OK. So under File, I'm going to choose Save As, Save As. And I'm going to name this Mat 1. So I'm going to show you how to do multiple mats. So I'm going to save this as Mat 1. Be sure under Format to change it to JPEG. Or I believe you can do it as a PNG. I just use JPEG. Um, so that's saved. And it is saved on my desktop, so I, choose, I chose OK. Um, what I am going to show you, and this is probably like level two here, but I am going to show you how to take it a step further if you want to make multiple layers of your mat. If you do, just double click on that same layer, layer two again. As you can see, we have stroke. It's already selected, but I'm going to click on it again so that I can get my size feature size slider back up, up here again. Now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to go up to, I'm going to go up to 38. Okay, so now I have it at 38. And again, you can go as big or as small as you want. So now that I have it set at 38, I'm going to choose OK. And I'm going to save it again. Save as. I save them on my computer because I just delete them. And I'm going to name this one Mat 2. And again, be sure to change it to a JPEG. All right, so we're done in Photoshop. We're gonna go back to Cricut, Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna delete this white box because I don't need it anymore. All right, and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and upload. I'm gonna upload first Matt one. As you can see, I've got them named here. I'm going to upload it just, it doesn't really matter if you upload it as a simple or a complex. I'm going to go ahead and upload it as a simple image. Click continue. And let me make this a little bit smaller. What I want to do is eliminate all of this white around it because it was, it is a JPEG image. So as you can see, the select and erase tool is um, already selected and I'm just going to click on this white. Okay, now if you would like, especially on this first layer, it's sometimes fun to do that. If you would like to eliminate and have this cut out as well, you can just click on those spaces. Oops, I almost forgot these. All right, very good. So now we've gotten rid of all the white background that's not part of our mat, and I'm gonna choose continue. 
I'm going to move forward with this as a cut image. So I'm going to choose cut, save as a cut image. And now that it's saved, I'm going to select it. It's uploaded. I'm going to insert that image onto my mat. Okay, and it usually does come out the right size. Sometimes you have to adjust the size a little bit. So for this sake, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to change the color of this because obviously I don't want black behind a um, black title. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to yellow just so that you can see it really well. I'm going to change it to a pale yellow and I am going to use a range to send that to the back. And then I'm just going to move it right behind so that you can see what that looks like. All right, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to get the second mat that I did. That's going to be a little bit bigger than the first mat. So once again, it's already saved on my desktop from when we were working in um, Photoshop. So I'm going to choose Upload Image, Browse, and Mat 2 is on my desktop. So I'm going to choose Mat 2, and I'm going to open it. I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to choose... I'm going to use it as a simple image type. Make this a little bit smaller again so you can see. And this time, I'm not going to eliminate all of the white. Like, there's a space in between the two L's. I'm not going to eliminate that. That way, I have a, a solid. But you can if you want to, okay? So, all I'm going to eliminate is the white that's all the way around this mat. So, I'm going to click on it, and it's going to delete it. Click continue, and I'm going to save it as a cut image again. And now that it's saved, I'm going to choose it and insert that image. All right, so for this one, I'm going to go ahead and make it, um, let's make it red. Nice, pretty red. Or magenta. That's not magenta. All right. And I'm again going to use a range to send that to the back and just adjust it. Oops, I'm playing with the wrong one. All right, and there it is. And if you want to adjust the size, if you want to adjust the size of all of them, let's just, let's just say I wanted to make this whole thing a little bigger or a little smaller than what it is, then you can simply use select all. That way, when you're adjusting the sizes of, you're adjusting the size of all of them and keeping the scale, keeping the scale the same on them. I hope that helps y'all and you guys have a great day.